I want to show you strategies of getting effective meshes for your computational modeling solution. And these strategies range from a uniform mesh to a localized mesh, and most importantly, an adaptive mesh. Let's sit back and relax as we explore these three approaches of generating effective mesh for your numerical solution. So as we get into this video, I want to start with a plate that has a cruciform shape that is cut out from it. And the essence here is to have something that has a lot of stress concentration regions within it so that we can have a complex stress history within the structure. And with this, you have these different areas of stress concentration scattered across the whole structure. So using the wrong mesh, we will not be able to get effective prediction from this. And so we are going to try and optimize the mesh that is associated with this so that we can get the best result. We'll also be imposing a shear load onto the system so that we can have a system that shows a lot of plastic deformation, again, enhancing the necessity of having an accurate mesh associated with this model. So the first method that we're going to be using is what I call a global or uniform mesh. This is the mesh type that most people are quite used, used to. So if you look at the system here, so this mesh A, a global mesh. So basically this material is made from cruciform and all the dimensions are already specified here. So this was the dimension that basically this is a shape. So it's not really important. And if in terms of generating the mesh, so the uniform mesh require you just to, you click on this and Abacus already is predicting that this system will give you an approximate global mesh size of four. And then we'll see what kind of result we generate with that. So once we select that, then you can select, okay, I'm going to use a triangular mesh element shape because of the shape, and then we can then mesh it. So we get on a sort of an okay, interesting looking uh, mesh discretization. Of course, there are issues around this area having maybe a few meshes, but generally this is the default that comes with Abacus. And so we can go ahead and try and set up the model to run. So the material is made of steel and the way that I'm applying the load. So at the back end here, um, I've fixed the back and the front end, I've also created a nodal set from the front end. And then this is a shear load or basically my load that is attached at this corner. So it's acting in the Y direction to create a shear load. In order to make the connection between this and that, I'm going to introduce a constraint equation. So that constraint equation, basically what that would do is to link the behavior of the loading at this reference point to the front load. So this is a constraint equation oriented in the two direction. Again, if you want to learn a bit more about how this constraint equation works, then this video will help you to do so. If this is the kind of content that you like, please do subscribe to this channel. So when contents like this are made, you'll be the first to see it. And also, if you like, you can leave any comment in the comment section of this. So with the first case, this is the sort of result you're getting get with showing a shared information. And again, what you would notice right away is that there's a lot of stress concentration only at those points, those thin regions in the system. And it's predicting here that there is quite a lot of stress deformation. This structure is going to snap and, and, and break and fail at around that, that value. So whether this is right or wrong, we, we wouldn't know. But the mesh is really playing a role in creating this. So let's look at the next instance. So if we then create a copy of this first case, I'm going to call it my mesh B localized share. So we're using exactly what we had before, only that in this instance, we are going to use a different mesh type. So this is a localized shear case. So we will still work with the general mesh that is generated. However, we're going to improve on that by trying to provide some edge mesh, some edge meshes. So, so we're going to finally mesh this region around the structure. So what we're going to do is to basically select that region. So we selected that done. And then I'm going to probably reduce it to a mesh size of one. So this is something else that, you know, people can also do. So you find regions where you think that there are high enhanced stress concentration there and mesh those finely. So this could also work. So in the end, we'll have an improved mesh density associated with this. So we can go ahead and run this model. Okay, with the second case, now this is sort of result that you're getting and you begin to realize that, okay, what we thought initially that this region had a lot of stress concentration then actually is really being driven by the behavior of, of the mesh and that region. And so that's probably not the ideal way to do this. So this is an improvement on the result. We're finding that actually the areas of stress concentration are in the corner in this shear loaded system. But then the question is, is this not an overkill? 
how can we actually find the right mesh density for this problem? So this brings us to the third case, which is the adaptive meshing. So if I then create, let's, let's go with case one. So if we create a copy and then we'll call it mesh C. So this will be the adaptive shear case. So it's exactly what we had in the first instance. So the only difference is that we need to introduce adaptive meshing. So we go to the meshing module and right at the top here, there's this adaptivity term. So we need to introduce a rule. We create a rule to help us with our adaptive meshing. So it said, which region do you want to? We want it to apply across the whole region. And okay, so this is, I could I call it my adaptive mesh rule. Okay. And we're going to use the element energy. It, it's typically the best form to use the element energy and we leave everything by default. So we've got this adaptive mesh and everything is fine. So all we need to do is to go back and run the model. So, and then we can run, we'll basically run that model. So job adaptive. So what it will do here under this adaptive mesh is that it will run. And because we have asked it to work with this adaptive machine rule, it will try and find out what error we are getting by using a coarse mesh or a poor mesh as against the optimal value that we should get for that region where you have stress concentration. So, and with that information, we can then refine our mesh and improve our solution. So if we look at the result, okay, it's not really any different from what we have before in case A, but what becomes interesting here is that if we then look at under the adaptive meshing case, so if we look at the adaptive mesh, right back at the top here, manual adaptive mesh, so we can then ask the model to so when we open this model we'll find out that somewhere here the job we ran job adaptive mesh there is the job adaptive mesh here okay so we open that and then we display the result so what this basically is telling us that okay now in the job that is run there is a 79 percent er error indicator between what the result should be as against what we are generating by just using this coarse mesh so that's that's not working well. So what we are going to do based on that information, we tell it to remesh. So once you remesh, you find that the mesh has changed and we have an improved mesh again. And then we could, okay, so let me rename that and set up and just call this number two. So with that, we can then go ahead and submit the job based on this remeshed, adaptively remeshed. And if you look very closely here, so it's picking up this region as particularly critical, unlike this region which is what we didn't do with the localized mesh because in the localized mesh, every region we thought was important and we finally meshed them. But the region here is critical. And so it's putting a lot of meshes in that region, thereby optimizing the prediction that we're going to get. So this way we're having a lesser element number compared to what we did when we do the localized meshing. And this is the improvement that you get with adaptive meshing on your model. So this is the result that we generate, okay, with the adaptive mesh. So it's comparable to the finely meshed case that we looked at the localized mesh, but the improvement we have here is that the element number is not as much because we are picking regions that are critical and we're op optimizing them with adaptive meshing. And so this is what you get here. So if we put all three together, so then obviously it, it begins to show you what's really happening. So right at the beginning here, you find that there's too much um, stress concentration on that region because it's not optimally meshed. There's a lot of improvement here. This and these two are comparable, however, the mesh number is much, much higher in this region compared to that other region because of this optimization of the mesh density. So we have quite an improvement in this region. And then predictions here and there are not as ac accurate. So with the adaptive mesh, you've got an improvement in your prediction. If you want to get similar abacus tips and tricks like this, then look at this playlist or just any other kind of video that YouTube thinks is important to you will be here. Thank you for your interest in this video and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye-bye.